week, Limp Biscuit mounts a gorilla gig in Boston. The Tibetan Freedom Concert goes global. Sarah McLaughlin previews the last Lilith Fair tour. Scary Spice on ex-partner Jerry Hallowell's solo album. Back with Scary Spice on ex-partner Jerry Hallowell's new solo move and the Beastie Boys with Tibetan Freedom 1999. Don't go away. What's probably most moving about being a part of it is the different times that Tibetans have come up to me and, uh, and spoken about spoken to me about what it meant to them to, to have the concert, to, to be at the concert, to be able to speak. Welcome back to 1515. The fourth annual Tibetan Freedom Concert took place last Sunday, a global affair this time out, with complimentary shows staged in cities as far afield as Amsterdam, Tokyo, Sydney, Australia, and the big one here at home in Alpine Valley, Wisconsin. Tibet show founder Adam Yauk and his fellow Beastie Boys were on hand at that latter date, along with Blondie, Run DMC, and Rage Against the Machine. Here's a quick wrap-up. <laughs> One evidence, piece of evidence that I've heard people kind of point to is that since the first Tibetan Freedom Concert there were 60 chapters of Students for Free Tibet and now uh, there are 400 chapters of Students for Free Tibet. <laughs> While the Tibetan movement appears to be growing, this year's fourth annual Tibetan Freedom Concert was much smaller, stateside anyway, compared to the two-day festivals of years past. Though organizers went international for the first time, with shows in Tokyo, Sydney, and Amsterdam. All the different governments of the world have interactions with the Chinese government, so all countries are, are in a position, all countries of the world are in a position to affect the Tibet situation. <laughs> But now more than ever is a perfect time to draw attention to the Tibetan cause, according to event organizer Adam Yauk, who sees the recent Columbine tragedy as an unlikely invitation to ignite further dialogue. This is the, the tragedy that happened in uh, Littleton, Colorado. People from the U.S. government were contemplating how to prevent that from happening in the future and how we could possibly show our young people that... Uh, that um, that nonviolence is the way that things should be approached, or that, that their problems should be solved through dialogue and not through violence. And uh, people from the U.S. government could certainly be doing is is be supportive of a nonviolent movement like the like the Tibetan movement. We get together and make good music, you know, and we want the people to come out and have a good time, man, and feel, you know, good when they leave. So I think that's what this is really about. Is That's what you use as the tool to pass on your information. You know what I mean? Feeling good, then they can disseminate the information better. I'm always here for a good cause. Any good cause. I did Live Aid years ago, and, um... We do benefits all the time. And we, that's what we're here for. We, if we can help somebody, we, we're here to help. I look at it like we'll do whatever we can to be supportive of the Tibet situation. And if that looks like uh, doing concerts is going to continue to benefit it, then we'll continue to do that. If it looks like some other thing will help, then, uh, then we'll continue to do that. But hopefully there will start to be a change in the near future and we won't need to do them anymore. Fans keep an eye out for Reverb, HBO's live music series this fall, for a special telecast of that 1999 Tibetan Freedom concert.